Hi, my name is Mark Miosevic, and I'm the Managing Director of Veeam Limited. And today I'd like to tell an interesting story about this bell that you can see right beside me. 10 years ago, Veeam was contracted to manufacture the Anzac Bell, commemorating the ending of the First World War. Initially, this was to be cast in England, and then the people that were organising it realised that it could be manufactured right here in Western Australia. This is the largest operating bell in the Southern Hemisphere at the moment, and we're very proud to be able to manufacture it. Casting something like this is not just about scale, it's a convergence of metallurgy, design, and sound. And the shape has to be mathematically precise. So the wall thickness needs to be uniform, the surface finish has to support both tone and appearance, and of all, the bell must ring true, literally. And to do that without post-cast grinding or reshaping, is incredibly difficult. This is actually a six and a half ton bell when finished and this is the pattern that was used to manufacture the bell and what's so unique about it is it is a very obviously a curved bell and it has a frieze of scenes from the First World War and these were 3D plastic printed and fitted onto the pattern of the bell so we could manufacture it. So a little bit of the old fashioned technique of making patterns and then with the new technique of making patterns with 3D plastic printing. So the design of the bell came through a close collaboration between the Swan Bell Tower and the RSL. The final version featured this engraved frieze, the curved frieze here. It's nearly two meters long and repeated on 10 panels. And it also included the raised lettering of the Ode of Remembrance. For us, the challenge was to convert a grayscale 2D artwork into a 3D relief that would read correctly in both sunlight and shadow. So we used uh, software to map tonal values to depth, white meaning no depth, black being the deepest point. Once the mould was finalised, we began casting. What we needed to make a six and a half tonne bell was nearly 10 tonnes of this 80% copper, 20% tin alloy. The interesting part about this bell, this particular bell, is it's got a couple of special ingredients. It's got some gold sovereign coins that were minted between 1912 and 1914. And there's a gold sovereign from each state in Australia that has gone into the metal. These were donated by Mark Creasy, a prominent West Australian mining personality. On top of that, the actual copper and tin was also donated from people within Australia. So it has a very special significance. We used a number of furnaces, a primary furnace, what we call a hot top, and then an emergency backup feeding two ladles and the alloy's high tin content gave it an excellent resonance, but it also made it brittle and prone to stress cracking on cool down. So thermal management was critical. The knockout temperature was set below 200 degrees Celsius and we predicted a 14 day cool down cycle before we could safely remove it from the mould. The bell was then tuned by staff of Whitechapel Bells who came to Australia especially and one of the great accolades for our foundry was that it was the roundest bell that they'd ever actually tuned. A huge compliment to our guys and I know they spent a lot of time getting it perfect. It was formally commissioned on Remembrance Day, November 11th, exactly 100 years after the end of the First World War. It stands today as a national symbol of remembrance and a testament to what Australian manufacturing can achieve when applied to something that matters. It's a very important symbol to the sacrifice that many Australians made to defend the freedom and democracy that we enjoy in Australia today.